We know from science and medicine that genetics are very important for autism. As a reminder, genetics is the science that studies the building blocks of how any living being is made, including people. We all have our entire set of instructions, our genome, in each and every one of our cells. I like to think of them as an encyclopedia in a library like this one. Our genetic encyclopedia has 23 pairs of books, which we call chromosomes, and we get one book in each pair from our biological mom and one from our biological dad. With such a big encyclopedia, doctors have discovered hundreds of different genetic changes that can lead to autism. Although each of those genetic changes is really rare on its own, when brought together, they can be found in one out of every three people with autism. Most of the time, these genetic changes are not inherited from one of the parents, but instead happen by chance, which we call the novel. Although autism cannot be diagnosed with a genetic test, it is very important to look at the genome of people on the autism spectrum after a diagnosis is made, as finding a genetic change can help people understand better the reason for autism in their case and give doctors important information to help when needed. Now that we learned about genetics and genetic changes, how do we look at our genetic library? With genetic testing. In fact, many medical societies recommend offering specific tests for people on the autism spectrum. One of them is called chromosomal microarray. This test looks for any missing or extra pieces of DNA throughout the entire genome and tells us what specific part of the encyclopedia is involved. Because it looks at every single book, it can uncover big and small changes alike and tell us whether a genetic change is likely causing clinical symptoms or not. Another one is called Fragile X Testing and it looks at one single word or gene on the X chromosome. As genetic changes in this gene are one of the most frequent causes of autism and cause fragile X syndrome. <laughs> Lastly, we have exome and genome sequencing. These tests, too, look at our entire genome, but they are also able to read each of the words in our encyclopedia, or genes, to detect any changes in their spelling. Some of these changes don't lead to clinical symptoms, while others change the function of our genes. In those cases, we call them mutations. <laughs> 